Well, welcome back, friends, to Build a Lot Acres. My name's Case, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about wood stove and chimney safety. Stay tuned. to say a quick disclaimer it's up to you as a responsible owner of your stove or wood burning appliance to check the specific requirements for that stove nothing I say in these videos is going to overrule the manufacturer's specifications or your local officials jurisdiction whether it be building department fire department they have the ultimate say in how it gets installed at the end of the day so don't take anything I say for heart or for granted check with them they're the professionals so continuing on with the firewood series that we're currently doing, I've been talking a lot about firewood, different properties of firewood, moisture content, BTUs, how to store it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna be linking some of those videos at the end of the video. Maybe I'll even link the actual playlist so you can check out all the other videos that you might have missed. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the other side of the equation, what you're burning the wood in, whether it be a wood stove, wood boiler, furnace, fireplace, there's a few things that you really need to know, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So this is going to be mainly geared towards people that have never burned wood before. So I'm going to assume you do not already have a wood burning appliance, such as a wood stove. In most places, it's going to be called solid fuel burning appliance, but wood burning stove, wood stove, you know, etc. So I'm assuming you don't have one already, and you're going to install one. I think the very first thing we need to kind of discuss is the legalities of installing and setting that wood stove up. Most places, you know, things can vary, rules change, but most places, especially in the US and even in other countries, are gonna require you to install that with a permit through your town, township, municipality, city, wherever you live. So you're gonna to have to have that, not only a permit, but you're gonna to have to have it inspected by the town. Often it's gonna be either the building department or the fire department. And they're gonna make sure that it's not only meets the building and fire code, but it also meets the owner's manual and installation manual, because every stove is different. So I would say the very first thing you wanna do is make sure that your stove is legally installed, permitted, and that's gonna come into effect. Some of you might be thinking, I don't really care if they inspect it. Well, you will care if you have an issue and the insurance company denies your claim and now you have a 20 grand of work you gotta do due to a fire damage and the insurance company says, no, you never pulled the permit we're not gonna cover you. So you really wanna make sure you do things legally and pull the permit. So now that you're gonna have your wood stove or wood burning appliance legally installed, what do you need to know year to year? What should you be looking at, checking, etc.? I'm gonna say the most important thing is gonna be keeping your chimney, which includes the thimble and stove pipes, it's all one venting system. You wanna keep that really clean. Clean as a whistle, in fact. That means yearly cleaning at a bare minimum. A lot of uh, you know, chimney sweeps, I think if you ask them and money was no object, they would probably recommend that they clean it more often than once a year. I know oftentimes people say, oh, I have my chimney clean for the year, I'm all set. Well, depending on how seasoned your wood is, you may have to clean it a lot more than that or how much wood you burn. If you're burning a lot of wood or you're burning unseasoned wood, I would be cleaning that chimney much more than once a year. I would probably recommend checking it at least once a month. Not necessarily cleaning it, but at least checking it. Especially if it's your first year burning and you've never burned before. Maybe it's a new to you stove or you've never bought wood from that cellar before. You really want to check once a month. Make sure it stays nice and clean because that doesn't take much creosote sticking to the walls to create a potential fire hazard. I personally clean my own chimney. I do it from the roof. I do it once a month just to be safe and have peace of mind. You certainly don't have to clean it once a month, but I feel better knowing that it's really clean. There's no way I would go one whole year or one whole season between cleanings. I think that's way too long. Unless you're burning a really small amount of wood or your wood's really dry, I think twice a year is probably gonna be a better number for most people, even three times a year, but at least twice. So that's gonna be the biggest thing is keeping your chimney clean. Like I said, it's not just the flue, it's also the pipe going into the stove itself, the stove pipe and the thimble going into the chimney. 
So keeping on the track of chimneys, I think it's an important differentiation to make. If you have a masonry chimney and has a clay flue, the soot, creosote, etc., is going to build up much quicker than it is on a stainless steel liner or flue. And if your chimney's on the outside of your house, you know, on the outside wall, and you don't have any kind of, you know, heat around it, it's going to also build up a lot quicker. It's going to stay a lot colder. You're probably going to have a harder time starting the wood burning appliance. You might get a little bit of back puffing, especially in the shoulder seasons where the outside temperature and the inside temperature aren't that different. Until that chimney's nice and warm, you could have issues with smoke coming back into the house. That's not uncommon. I've seen that happen to multiple people. It's happened to me. So it does happen to you. It's not necessarily you or the stove. It could just be the outside temperature differentiation and the amount of stack effect on your chimney. But like I said, outside chimneys and masonry chimneys are gonna be need to be cleaned more often, in my opinion, than stainless steel chimneys or chimneys that are completely in the building envelope inside the house so there's air around them keeping them at a higher temperature. Because you think about it, if it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside and 70 degrees inside, your chimney on the outside of your house is gonna be you know, pretty much 20 degrees. To get that warmed up, is going to take a little bit of time and the flue gases are going to stay at a much lower temperature in that outside chimney with the frigid air right next to it versus the inside so that's going to make a difference what type of chimney you have so if you don't want to go clean your own chimney you're afraid of heights they do make products you can put in like cordless drills to clean it from the bottom you could put like a bag or something over it to catch the dust and the soot but you could also hire a chimney sweep or a chimney professional to sweep it for you. That is going to be more money and depending on what they find they you may uncover other issues with cracked flues or gaps or things that really should be corrected. So I personally do it myself. I just don't have the money to pay someone to clean my chimney. I would have them come out every couple months and it would cost me hundreds of dollars every winter to clean my chimney and it would kind of defeat a lot of the purpose of burning wood which for me is to save money is a big part of the, the deal. I know a lot of people don't want to clean their own chimney. They would rather pay someone else to do it, which I get. So in that case, just pay a chimney professional to clean your chimney. So the stove installation, the chimney, some other things I would check every year prior to you starting your stove for the first time, you want to make sure that all your gaskets are in good shape. So that's going to be mainly your loading door, putting the wood into the stove. You can have a gasket around the door to keep it airtight. You want to make sure that's in good shape. If it's not, you can chisel it out, put some new gasket seal it, and put a new gasket rope on. Those are going to be fire resistant gaskets. They're commonly sold in stove shops. Even places like Home Depot have them. You're also going to want to check the condition of the stove overall. Make sure it's not excessively warped. Make sure you don't have any hairline cracks. If your stove has fire bricks, you want to make sure those are in decent shape. They're not missing any pieces. They're not cracked. You know, just take a good general look at the stove. Make sure everything looks proper. And another big thing that I see is, you know, when you have your stove installed, you're going to have clearances to combustibles, which is the minimum distance you need to keep away from the stove to anything combustible. Whether that be a fireplace mantle, maybe a bookshelf, couch, you know, anything that could burn. You want to make sure that you're maintaining that distance at all times. I know sometimes over the years, people start stacking stuff where it really shouldn't be. And that, you know, previously, let's say 36 inch, distance now they have something stacked closer and it's only 28 inches you really want to keep a good eye on that because it could be a potential fire hazard so look at your installation manual and owner's manual for your stove it's going to call out what you need i mean the general kind of rule of thumb is 36 inches but some stoves are less than that it's all going to be dependent on the manufacturer specifications and it's going to be in your installation manual if you don't have one print one offline for your model stove you really want to have that on hand so you're familiar with the requirements and the different, you know, technicalities of your particular stove. So installing the stove, the chimney, the yearly kind of check. What else is there really to look at for safety? I would say one of the biggest things is going to be carbon monoxide detection. You want to make sure you have a working carbon monoxide detector in the general vicinity of your wood burning appliance. That's going to ensure that if you're sleeping in the middle of the night and your flue is clogged, you didn't have it cleaned or it's dirty, you're going to be woken up by the alarm if carbon monoxide starts coming back in your house. That can be a deadly thing and it's a real serious matter 
and it's something you want to take really seriously. So you want to make sure that you have a working carbon monoxide detector in the general vicinity of the stove so that it alerts you if there's anything wrong. So I think other than that, that covers most of the safety stuff. You know, obviously you want to keep a decent eye in the stove your first year. You want to kind of work with it. Some common things that you're going to see is new stoves tend to off gas and you might smell a little bit of burning paint or things like that. That's normal break-in kind of procedures for stoves. Most of that's going to be covered in your owner's manual or your installation manual. And it's not really something to overly concern yourself with. And I think other than that, that's about it. If you guys have any questions about this video or if you have suggestions for other videos, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm really enjoying doing it. I hope it's teaching you guys some stuff, maybe being a little entertaining. I know it's not the most exciting of topics, but I think it's very important. I think it needs to be said and hope you guys find it worthwhile. See you next time.